The mortgage delinquency numbers from the Canadian Bankers Association are complete BS. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly why we're going to use an article from 2005 from the Globe and Mail and the Wayback Machine. And I will show you. So anyway, let's get right into it. Mortgage default rates, the lowest since 1990. So this was October 20th, 2005. But what I really want to highlight from this article is what it says about 1990. So roughly 25 out of every 1,000 mortgages are in arrears in 2005, compared with the early 1990s, when amid soaring interest rates, as many as 65 of every 1,000 borrowers were in default. So think about that, guys. The math is actually pretty easy on that. So you know it's just going to be 6.5% that you're looking at in terms of a default rate. If you go over to the percentage calculator and plumb that in, it's exactly what you get, you get 6.5% as we've got right here, you can see it. So basically what's happening there, what that is showing us is that default rates got to six and a half percent. So now we want to know what were the numbers coming from the Canadian Bankers Association at that time. It doesn't actually show where the Globe and Mail is actually getting that data source from. We honestly don't know, but let's just trust them more than the banksters themselves. Let's give them some credit here. And we'll actually go over now to the Wayback Machine and see what was going on there. So the Wayback Machine, I have put this in the CBA website. And you can see that if you actually go back to 2016, they used to put out this report, which would actually show everything from 1990. And if you look at this, guys, you'll notice something. The delinquency rate, it barely changes. You know, it did go up in the 1990s, but it peaked out at around around 0.64% of mortgages in default. So not 6.5%, 0.64%. So that kind of shows you that the delinquency rate at the CBA is not always an accurate representation. And in fact, I would argue it's complete BS. That number barely ever changes and it's not really accurate at all. And where are they sourcing that data from, might you ask? It's the banksters. It's the banks themselves. So of course, course, the data is going to be manipulated. They don't want to put it out there to their shareholders that they're dealing with a massive increase in delinquencies. Obviously, to a certain extent, they have to reveal their position in filings and different things. But the reporting requirements are much less than you really think. And they can hide things very easy with simple accounting gimmicks like we saw in the United States with all the regional bank failures that we just went through by not marking assets to market, different tricks like that, they can basically make their valuation look much larger than it is. And then you've got the yield curve that is the most inverted it's ever been since the 1990s. So could we be heading to default rates of that magnitude? Well, I would actually argue that it's going to be a lot worse than that. Because if you look at consumer confidence, which is below 50, and it's been below 50 for a long time now, it's only poked its head above it once once pretty much or twice in 2022 and 2023. It's absolutely tanking. You're down to the level where we nearly hit this recession here in 2016. We're not really in a good spot. Consumer confidence is not in a good place. We obviously also know as well that consumers are really struggling. They are starting to default on credit cards and auto loans. So what is next? It's the mortgages. It just makes sense. It's logical. We know that's going to happen. People aren't going to be able to pay the mortgage forever. And a lot of people who've renewed their mortgage, they're not getting credit checked, which I think is just absolutely ridiculous. So if you're not getting a credit check at renewal, that could mean that you're not worthy of essentially getting that credit. And yet the bank's going to toss it you anyway. So that is just increasing the risk in the banking system. And I think, again, this is just another risk, just like the negative amortization that nobody is picking up, nobody wants to look at. The regulator doesn't even question it. So obviously, with all these things going on, with the backdrop of the economy, with the backdrop of all the falling PMIs, do you reckon it's going to be a good thing for mortgage defaults in the future? Generally, these defaults actually rise when they start cutting rates, because that's when we're in a massive economic crisis when they're doing that. They're not cutting rates because they got inflation down and we're at this soft landing point. It's because of an economic crisis. So what do you think is going to happen? And what do 
you think of this? The fact that the, the number of arrears for these mortgages is so insanely low when you really think about it. It is crazy to think how different the data is. I mean, this article, I will leave a link to it in the description. But as you can see here, it was at 2.5% in 2005. It was at 6.5% in the 1990s. But again, once you look at that Bankers Association data, it just basically says a complete opposite story to what we would expect. So obviously, there is something going on there. We don't know exactly what it is. And we've been through this as well, which is people are running out of savings. And obviously, I've so shown you the chart from National Bank. That really paints the picture of what's going on here. And I'll pull that up. So you can see from this chart, essentially, what is going on, that if you look at real adjusted for inflation savings, you can see that they're absolutely tanking here. You can really see that they have dropped. And all I've done, guys, is I've took this trend here and just extrapolated it. This isn't the exact chart. I've literally just extended the trend lines to show you where these have headed because they haven't actually updated this chart yet. So we don't actually know that these are going down here. But if you assume the trend continues, you're just going to see that these have absolutely tanked and they are way below the levels that they were in 2019. And all we are concerned about is real adjusted for inflation and real per capita, real per capita. Nominal doesn't really matter too much because yeah, okay, people can feel warm and fuzzy because they've got more savings in their account than they've ever had before. But when you really think about the situation, guys, you have to look at adjusted for inflation because this is what people can actually buy. This is the economic reality. And they have much less purchasing power, much less savings than they had in 2019. So again, how can they sustain these high mortgage payments if they lose one job? A lot of people are working now two jobs. We discussed that this week as well. So obviously there are massive problems that are going into the future. And I hope that this Christmas, a lot of people are having those hard conversations with each other on what they're going to do and putting together a plan of what they're going to do in the future. Because I believe that that is key in turbulent times like we are facing right now. I mean, things are just going from bad to worse month by month. We can all hope that things are going to get better. But the reality is we have to look at the data. We have to look at what is going on and things are just getting increasingly worse. So anyway, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I want to wish your family well. I want to hope that you have a great time this holiday season. Take some time off. The schedule for videos will be all over the place during the Christmas week, but watch out for new videos. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this video here. You might like this playlist here and I'll see you in the next one.